Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, The Magical Maven. My name is Heather and today I am doing a singles love reading for my single goddesses out there. So this isn't just limited to single ladies, it's anyone who considers themselves a she. So whether you're looking for a she or a he, um, either applies. So you could choose by number as well as crystal or stone. If you feel called to one number, but then also you know, feel called to a different crystal or stone, I would watch both. This is a general collective reading, so not everything necessarily is going to apply. So if you feel called to more than one pile, it just might be because there's messages in a couple different piles for you. So again, it's a collective message, so take what resonates. So we're going to begin with pile number one who chose Retaliated Quartz. Okay, so those who chose pile one or the Retaliated Quartz. So for your tarot cards, we have Ten of Wands, Four of Cups, and the Nine of Swords. So I'm going to lay out all the cards and then I will do the reading. So from the Goddess Guidance, we have Bridget, don't back down, stand up for what you believe is right. From the Romance Angels, we have Religious Factors. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. Codependency, addictions are affecting your romantic life. And let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. From the Moonology deck, to see kind of where your emotional state is, we have Don't Let Pride Get in Your Way, Full Moon and Leo. From the Angel Answers, we have No, Communicate Clearly, and A Year From Now. From the Oracle of the Mermaids, we have Lumaria Returns, Earth Spirituality, Community, Ocean Conservation. And I just want to mention sometimes with the cards it might not mean exactly what it says because different cards can have different meanings it's also what comes through intuitively so if you're like how does that tie in with romance um, I will let you know for the possible signs that your person that you're dealing with or could be dealing with are we have Aquarius and Capricorn and it's not just limited to those signs that's just possible what sign if you you know you've been dealing with someone dating someone you know i mean obviously this is a singles reading but if there's someone you've been interacting with involved with in some way shape or form or you know this could be a future person and it doesn't have to be limited to their sun sign and when i say sun sign that's just when people ask what your sign is that's your sun sign but it also could be um other influences in the person's chart for the archetype what your person could be we have femme fatale the light attributes, we have highlights the erotic energy of the feminine, opens your heart when your dependency is rejected, and the shadow is inappropriate use of sensuality, attachment to money, and power. Okay, and then for the lover's oracle, we have time. You are trying too hard. Give it time. Okay, so something that I got um, right off the bat, and this isn't going to be for all my single goddesses watching, this is just for a portion of you. And it was funny because I got this before this card even came out. I did get that some of you um, who chose pile one are single parents or single mothers. And, and it's like you have all this burden and weight on your shoulders because you are doing it alone. And that's where the Ten of Wands and the Knight of Swords is coming through. You feel unsupported because you don't have a partner, someone to help you by your side. However, it's showing that you do have support, but you're not asking for it with the let your friends help you and then the don't let pride get in your way. So it's showing that, you know, you're feeling unsupported. You feel like no one can help you. You've taken on all this burden, but actually you just maybe haven't asked for that help. You know, maybe you're so used to being on your own that, you know, you feel like if you ask for help, you know, you feel like you could get in this codependent 
area and not, you know, it's just maybe you're very independent that you're like, no, I, you don't feel comfortable or feel right asking for help. Um, the other side to that is maybe in the past you were codependent on someone or you did rely on someone and they betrayed you or it didn't work out and then you kind of had to learn to be independent and then that's kind of where you're like, no, I'm not going to go through this again. So a couple different scenarios, but if this resonates for you, um, this is one thing that really came through. Again, you know, single parent, single mom, you know, you're used to do, running the show on your own, you're used to doing things alone, but you do need to ask for help. So that's one aspect. If that doesn't apply to you, there's still more in this reading. Okay, so the no card is if there's someone that you've been involved with or were thinking of, it is telling you no. So there might be someone that you're interested in, but they might not be the right person for you. And, and I, you know, I don't want to discourage anyone, um, but there is the year from now. So it could just maybe be a not right timing thing. However, this, you know, if you're, you know, crushing on someone, you're, you know, kind of in dating someone, they just might not be the right person or right fit for you. And there might be someone else a year from now. And with the year from now card, it doesn't mean it has to be exactly a year. It could be up to a year, you know, from now. So whenever you're watching this reading, but the person that you could be dealing with, maybe there is a lack of communication. And also I'm getting a lack of boundaries. So, you know, maybe there's someone that's not at your level in the sense of, you know, you have all this weight on your shoulders. You have a lot that maybe you're doing. Um, so for those of you who don't have kids, I think some of you maybe are very like strong business minded people who maybe, or, or trying to be, you're trying to build something from the ground up, or you already have a successful business. And, you know, this person maybe is not on your level. Maybe they don't understand that, you know, you have a lot on your plate with this ton of wands. And, but you like, I like how in each tarot deck, they all have different illustrations, right? And with this ton of wands, like look how graceful, even she has all those wands on her back. It's not like she's not being burdened by them. Like she handles it very well. So my goddess is out there. Like it is showing that, you know, you are able to get things done. You know, you're, you make it look easy, even when it's not. So, you know, do, um, take comfort in knowing that but and that that's also where maybe sometimes people don't offer help because maybe you make it look so effortless that they don't think that you know people don't offer their help so that's maybe where you need to ask so again if you know you don't you don't have kids but maybe there's something else that you know your hands are tied in ways because you have to put a lot into something you know family career business whatever it is and um and that's where you're needing to ask for some help um, again, you know, if you're wanting a romantic partnership, it's just not looking like right now. And that's why we got the time card. You're trying too hard. So maybe you're trying to make this person fit. If there is someone you have in mind fit, that doesn't really fit you. And with this, don't back down, stand up for what you believe is right. That's maybe where I was getting the boundaries. Like, you know, it's showing like you as strong and powerful and maybe the person you're interested in, they're maybe like, it might be comfortable for you. Maybe, you know, again, I'm just getting, maybe they're not on your level. Like they don't maybe understand where you're coming from because they don't have, they're not in the same situation or they don't maybe take things as seriously. Um, they could be younger than you, or they maybe just act younger. And then for those of you, again, who don't currently have children, what I'm getting like Lumaria was like, I don't know if you know anything about heard about Lumaria, but it was before Atlantis, which, which some people, you know, dispute whether it was a real place or not. However, Lumaria was like this heaven on earth. And so this is kind of really showing, you know, you want to create this beautiful life for yourself and you're trying. So, and that's maybe where like, she's alone in this picture and, and you're maybe not wanting to be alone anymore. You're wanting to create something with someone and I know it's, you know, again, like I understand if this isn't what you're wanting to hear that it's not happening right now, but again, it's like showing, you know, within a year from now or a year from now, it's just, you know, there's other things in the works right now. So maybe it's not even you, like maybe your person that com is coming in, maybe they're not ready and it's just all about timing. Right. But with this four of cups, you, you're just kind of like, uh, you know, when is it going to happen for me? When is, you know, my life going to take off? you know, cause maybe you feel like unfulfilled in that area because you don't have a partner by your side. So this is causing you this distress. 
with this Nine of Swords energy. And, okay, so with the Femme Fatale card, so this was going to be the person coming in. So if, you know, you're a she, you know, who's dating a she, this makes sense that this could be her energy. However, if you're a she who's, um, you know, dating a he or looking for a he, then it's maybe more your energy that you're trying to turn on this charm, you know, your sensual, sexual power and, you know, trying to seduce to maybe, you know, get this person. But I'm getting something about like, you know, you'd be wasting it on them. <laughs> and I, you know, that's not to say, you know, I just think again, maybe it's just, they're not a right fit for you. And again, for some of you, it might just not be right now. It might just be later down the road. But for some of you, I don't think this is the right person for you. And I think maybe if you look deep down, you'll know if what I'm saying is true or not, right? Because if, you know, some of you might know, yeah, okay, I'm just crushing on this person to have a crush or, you know, you're maybe projecting or putting a fantasy on them, but you kind of know, okay, this isn't really what I'm wanting, who I'm wanting. They're just kind of, um, they're just there in a sense. But for those of you who really think that you have something with this person, it just maybe not, might not be the right time. And again, with Capricorn Aquarius, whether they're actually, their sign is a Capricorn Aquarius, or they could even be someone on the cusp of these two signs, Capricorn Aquarius, or they could just have this in their chart. So, you know, like Sun, Moon, you know, Venus, Rising, Mars. But again, take what resonates. Um, so let me see if there's anything else. Okay, so yes, with this religious factors, so I think the reason why right now things aren't working out is because there are things that still need to happen, um, possibly in your life, but probably, you know, also most certainly in the other person, whoever, you know, your future partner is coming in, they might be having like some trials, tribulations, karmic lessons, or maybe even with a karmic partner, something that is preventing them from coming to you right now. Again, doesn't mean it won't happen. And this person could possibly have issues with codependency or again this could have been you in the past and this is where like you know you have to use this time to be independent and i'm getting like your time to shine and it's funny because the you know the crystal you chose has with the routine with the gold so it's funny like you know i'm getting time to shine so and just trying to see if there's anything else that comes through Okay, and then also for some of you with the let your friends help you, I think it's just some of you need to like, oh, I just got something about letting your guard down more. So maybe you need, you need to talk to, you know, your, you know, your friends more, um, hang out with them, kind of maybe get out of the mindset that you need to be with someone, you know, because love is all around you. Love isn't just romantic love. So, you know, that love, that self love, you know, love for your family, love for your friends, if you have kids, you know, sharing an not just romantic love, there is other love out there. And when you embody love, you're gonna attract love to you. So I hope that makes sense. So this is for my pile number one, single goddesses. So I hope um, you enjoyed this reading, it made sense. And feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe. And then if you feel like there was another pile that called to you, feel free to choose that one as well. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to pile number two. So my pile number two, single goddesses. If you chose the red tiger's eye or pile number two, this reading is for you. So I'm gonna go through all the cards first and lay them down and go through the reading. So from the tarot cards, we have the sun, king of swords, and the five of wands. From the Goddess Guidance, we have Green Tara. Start delegating. Ask others, including me, to help you instead of trying to do everything by yourself. Okay. And that's interesting. Um, if you felt uh, found found <laughs> if you felt called to pile one or the retaliated quartz, um, I would check that one out because that, there was a message just in pile one that kind of went over what the Green Tara card is saying. So romance angels, we have worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. 
We have very soon clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. New love, a new person has stirred your romantic feelings. Okay, from the moonology to kind of see like your emotional state. So two cards actually came out even though I wanted one, but I felt both were needed. So we have communication is key, new moon and Gemini, and emotions are running high, super moon. From the angel answers, we have within the next few weeks, and you are ready. Okay. From Oracle of the Mermaids, we have Yamaya, Grandmother Ocean Primordial. Okay. From the Black Moon Astrology cards, to see maybe what sign um, the person you're dealing with, we're going to be dealing with is, we have Libra and Taurus. And then for the archetype cards to see maybe um, more about this person's archetype, we have mystic. So the light attribute is rebels in intimate union with the divine. And then we have shadow attribute delusional rapport with the divine. And then from the lover's oracle, we have sacred union, honor and treasure your relationship for it is truly sacred. Okay, so if you ch chose pile number two or the red tiger's eye, this is a very beautiful pile for love. Because, so either you, you know, there's someone recently that you have met, um, but for a lot of you, this might be someone incoming. And it's so funny because, you know, when shuffling through these cards and then you get, you know, similar messages in the pile, it just, it's always like a confirmation that yes, this is correct. Because we have very soon, and then we have within the next few weeks. So again, you know, whether you know this person and it's just about to take off in the near future, or if this is someone brand new is the new love. So it's not someone you've already, you know, have been involved with or dated, um, they're new. But again, you know, you might know them. But for some of you, again, it's gonna be fresh energy. And with the worth waiting for, this is maybe the person that you finally, you know, been wanting to call in, you've been waiting for this relationship because with the sacred union, this isn't just a regular, you know, relationship or something that's comfortable and easy. This is a sacred union. So that's why I said it's like, you know, this is a beautiful pile if you chose this because yes, this is like a, you know, more of a soulmate connection, you know, not to put labels, but again, <laughs> so with, um, the Libra and Taurus, and it's funny too, cause Libra and Taurus are both represent, um, their ruling planet is Venus, the planet of love. So your person that's, you know, coming in, whether you know them or not, they could be a Libra or Taurus. And when people ask what your sign is, that's your sun sign. So if this isn't their sun sign, this could be an influence in their chart. So like rising, sun, Venus, Mars, or they could just maybe in the body, the energy of Libra or Taurus. With this card, I believe it's because for some of you or a lot of you, um, single goddesses out there, you might be wanting a family and that's what the person you're calling in, you know, this relationship you've been wanting, it's someone that you do want to settle down, you know, build a life, build a home, you know, maybe have a family with. So this is something close to your heart and this is why, you know, it's like even like happier because it's not just, oh, a love, it's like someone you're really wanting to build with. So again, for a lot of you, you could maybe be wanting to have babies and children. Not all of you, um, just some of you. It could just, you know, again, some of it could be about, you know, creating a life together. Okay, so for some of you, not all of you, but some of you, maybe the emotions are running high. Um, maybe in the past you've dealt with a toxic partner, toxic partners. So maybe um, this new love will take you by surprise because maybe it's someone completely different than you've been used to. And again, if this is more of a soulmate connection and you've been used to karmic partners, um, a, you know, karmic partner versus soulmate energies are very different. And I'm not going to get into all the, the differences where, you know, I'm just going to keep doing your reading, but it's something if you want to look up, if you're wondering, you know, what I'm, I'm talking about. <laughs> But with this mystic, it's like your person is probably spiritual. And if they're not actually spiritual, at least like they're open to it or they're connected to the divine. Maybe they're very in tuned, intuitive. 
you know, it's just, they have this mystical energy, you know, presence. So very well, this person can be spiritual. Um, and if not, like I said, you know, there's, they're connected, you know, they're, um, conscious, they're aware and I'm getting, you could trust them with communication is key. Um, it might just, and with the emotions are running high, I think once this person comes in, just make sure that you're not blocked. Um, like you don't want to give it all the way too soon, like with what you're communicating, but also you want to make sure you're, you're communicating your feelings as well, because you, yeah, there could be some kind of blockage between like head versus heart or in the heart chakras, throat chakras. So just make sure you're like prepared um, once this person comes in. Okay, so with this, the green tarot card, what I'm getting is that maybe some of you have been single for a while, and this is maybe where, you know, having to, like, open, you know, being open to a partner by your side, because even if, you know, for those of you, obviously, you're watching the single goddess reading for a reason, so even if we say, oh, yeah, I do want someone to come in, or I'm open to it, you know, you could say that on a conscious level, but like under the surface, you know, do you have any blockages or energetic blockages? So just making sure you're making room for that person in your life. And that's maybe what I'm getting. So for example, like with asking Green Tara, you could always ask, you know, her help with this. Yeah, I'm just getting like making room and space, you know, for, for this person coming in. And with the King of Swords, so Swords, you know, relate to air energy. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Again, you did get Libra before. So they could have, be an air sign or have air in their chart. Um, they might be someone that seems intimidating, but I'm getting it's more at first. They might just need to come out of their shell. But I get like for the most part, this person like has it together. I'm getting something in them about like being like with that sword, like clear cut, no bullshit. Like they're not gonna bullshit you. And with this five of wands, I think it again, it's like maybe you've had trouble in the past, so maybe you might not trust it right away. And again, I'm getting to like it's funny because like look how she's sitting, and then there's like the one, the lady in the middle, and then they're all around her, and they're not fighting, but they're kind of, she's kind of has that look. I'm getting that first, again, for some of you could have been single for a while, and then this is maybe your friends around you who are, like, wanting you to get out there, and you're like, I don't know, <laughs> like, maybe they're encouraging you, or, you know, they, on the other hand, they could maybe be, like, in your business or gossipy, like they'll want to know like the details and you know, maybe you're like, you like to keep things more close to the chest. Again, this, that doesn't mean that for everybody, um, different messages are coming through. So, you know, take what applies, but yeah, with the sun, I mean, this is a beautiful connection coming in. And with that sun, just like brightening up your day and I'm getting a night too. I don't know. <laughs> funny sometimes some things that come through but but yeah I mean like I said you know someone is coming in very soon that's a new love that's going to be what you've been wanting I mean this this could be your person or this could be someone that you do build something with that you have a significant connection with so you know just trust in how you feel but this is showing a sacred union so thank you for watching. If this resonated, you liked this video, please like, share, subscribe, comment. And if you felt called to another pile, whether by number or crystal or stone, feel free to check it out because there might be messages in there for you as well. Okay, so moving on to pile three. If you chose the bloodstone, and I know this bloodstone doesn't really have, there's like one little speck of red in it somewhere. It's like very little to see. So if you're like, why is this bloodstone? It's green and normally has red in it. And this one just has a little speck of it. Okay, so I'm gonna lay out the cards first and then we'll go over them. So from the tarot, we have the Fool, 
Three of Swords, and Ace of Swords. From the Goddess Guidance, you have Nematona, Sacred Space, create an altar or visit a power place to connect with the divine. From the Romance Angels, we have Give Your Relationship a Chance, work on your partnership. Chemistry, there's a strong magnetic attraction here. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Okay. The Moonology, to kind of see where your emotions are at when it comes to love and romance. We have Confidence is your key to success, New Moon in Leo. Angel Answers, we have Opportunity and Remain Positive. Oracle of the Mermaids, we have Divination, Prophecy, Fate, Destiny, Future, Fortune. From um, the Black Moon Astrology to see maybe possible what sign you've been dealing with or will be dealing with is, we have Leo and we have Scorpio. From the archetype cards to see maybe um, what archetype the person you're dealing with or will be dealing with, we have Don Juan. So the light is spotlight your positive seductive qualities, and the shadow is using the power of your romantic attraction for private agendas. And from Lover's Oracle, we have My Beloved. Though we may be physically apart, spiritually we are always united, for love transcends space and time. Nothing is missing. Okay. So my single goddesses in pile three. So with the give your relationship a chance, for some of you, you're already um, dating someone or involved with someone. So whether that's, you know, you're just dating or maybe you could have been on and off, but you know, you still are single, right? But there is someone that you do have this chemistry with. Yeah, I think for most of you, it's maybe someone that you haven't been involved with that much because it's obviously with the getting to know each other. So it could have been someone that maybe you were um, intimate with, like maybe you were sleeping with them, dating them casually, but maybe you didn't really know them. And, but you have a chemistry with them. And it's like, maybe you, you know, still want to get to know them more, or maybe you didn't consider it before. And you've just taken it for what you thought it was, which is the chemistry or the passion you know, the fooling around and it's, it's saying like, Hey, maybe give this person a chance because maybe there is something there. And cause with the fool energy, this is a new beginning, right? But this is also about taking a risk. And the thing is, maybe you don't want to take this risk because of this past or with this three of swords, because the three of swords is about heartbreak. It's about loss. So even though this could be a new, brand new beginning for you, it's like you're defensive about it. Like, it's like you're protecting yourself. Because also with the, um, these are the from the chakra tarot deck. So the reds are the, is the root chakra. So fear blocks the root chakra. And that's about our security, you know, um, our stability, you know, flight versus fight, you know. So for you, you might be reacting to past circumstances where, so you're putting your guard up, you know, it's like you're ready to like, exactly, fight or flight, you know, you're maybe not wanting to stick around to see if this goes south because of past hurts or past betrayal. And it's interesting with the three of swords because this is the soul, yellow is the solar plexus chakra. So it deals with our personal power, our will, our confidence, and you got confidence is your key to success. So maybe this past per partner that you had, this past hurt, it was someone maybe that tore you down in a way or, or another, or, you know, they, you know, you gave away your power, or, you know, they made you question your self-worth. And that's maybe why you're not wanting to take this opportunity with someone else. And whether this is actually the person for you, or this is someone that's going to help you to help heal your heart, help, you know, to move you out of that space, you know, you're getting the My Beloved card. So there is someone out there for you. So whether it's this person or this person is a stepping stone to the next person, the, the point is, is that you need to give it, you know, like your all, you need to take the risk, you need to take the chance. And with the sacred space is like, I'm getting that this, the sacred space is within yourself. And, you know, you need to honor yourself and it's not, 
and to you, you might feel like, oh, honoring myself is protecting myself. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you're, you know, we all um, are worthy and deserving of love, right? And love's just not romantic love. You know, it's, um, and I feel like you kind of need to connect with your um, inner power, your inner wisdom, your self-love, but, and maybe this person could help you with that. Again, whether you know, you, you, you're involved with them short term, long term, or they're the person for you, there is this chemistry with them. So I think you should give it a shot. And this is why it's showing remain positive. And like, look, this opportunity. And like, look at these, you know, golden jewels, like raining down upon you. More, you know, more gold, more yellow. And this person might like, see that you shine, see that you sparkle. Um, they, you know, they maybe see like, the beauty in you that you're not maybe seeing in yourself because you've been hurt. Okay, so with this possible signs that they are Leo or Scorpio, when people ask your sign, that's just your sun sign. So this could also be another influence in their chart, you know, like their rising, their Venus, their Mars, their moon, if they're not a Leo or a Scorpio. However, both these are fixed signs. Fixed signs, you know, are stubborn. You know, so this person might not be giving up on this connection because like they're knowing what they're wanting, so they're not willing to give up on you, you know, which is a beautiful thing, right? So, and that's, you know, no, I'm not saying that in like, a, you know, like where you're, if someone's not, if you're trying to tell someone to go away and they won't leave you, like I'm not, you know, um, justifying any of that behavior. I'm saying that this, you have a chemistry with this person and you just, your heart's blocked and you know, you're not wanting to take that risk, but they're kind of like, you know, like they're waiting in the wings. They, you know, they know your worth, they're interested, you know, they want to give it a shot. So they're willing to stick it out. Kind of, is that, that's what I'm saying. Nothing unhealthy. Okay. So with this divination card, what I was getting is that in the past, you might've had a reading from someone that told you something and maybe that could have caused you some grief or heartbreak or in some way, because maybe it wasn't, maybe what they told you hadn't happened, or maybe they told you something about somebody and then that relationship did turn into this hurt. And you're like, well, why, you know, why did they guide me to this person if they were only going to hurt me? And, and for one, it's like, we all have relationships, you know, that we go through that are lessons, you know, that, you know, or we need for our soul's growth or, you know, to help us heal our wounds, to get to the right person. So that's not to say like, just because they might've guided you towards, towards someone that, you know, when, yeah, when it comes to love, when it comes to feelings, you know, we're going to get hurt at some point, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't give it a shot. So if there was someone that, you know, you did get a reading from, or, you know, whether you watched a video like this, or you actually, you know, had a one-on-one -on -one reading and they guided you towards someone, it didn't work out. I mean, you still probably needed that person in your life. So that's not to say anything about like readers or readings and, you know, always trust your own intuition. But if this resonates for you and you have chemistry with this person, why wouldn't you want to give it a shot? You know, if you're worried about getting hurt, then, you know, you, I mean, you, for one, you wouldn't be watching this video about, you know, the single goddess love reading if you weren't interested in perhaps of what was coming your way in love. You would, you would just have, you wouldn't even watch a love reading, let's be honest, you know? With this Don Juan, I'm getting more that you're worried that this person is a Don Juan, that there may be a swindler or a player or, you know, because maybe they are someone that's very attractive or has like very um, attractive attributes in one, some way or shape or form. Like, you know, maybe, you know, they're, you know, very charming or they, you know, like make really good money. There's something about them that attracts, you know, people to them. So with this Don Juan, you know, whether you're watching, you know, if you're a she looking for a she or a she looking for a he, whatever this is, even though the Don Juan's a masculine energy, you know, again, it could be, again, like you might be worried that, oh, they have other options. They're a player. They might not, you know, I might just be one of many. So I'm getting more, this is about your fear of that. So, but don't just because, you know, they're really good looking or they have a lot going for them or other people find them attractive. That doesn't mean you shouldn't give them a chance. Cause again, like there's a chemistry with them and it's telling you to give them a chance. So, <laughs> so again, um, 
if this resonates for you, I would try to open the doors to your heart, try to get in touch with your heart, that sacred space energy. And just, you know, try to work on removing those blockages from the past, moving, you know, whatever had happened in the past happened in the past. What can you take away from it as like learning lessons, you know, to move on? But if, you know, like again, if this resonates, I do suggest giving them a chance, getting to know them more. And with the getting to know each other, that doesn't mean, you know, like jumping right into a relationship. This could be about like, okay, I'm going to open up with them, see. So, you, you know, you could always take baby steps. Again, like this person, this fixed sign, this Leo Scorpio energy, it's like they're, you know, they're not giving up on you. They're, you know, willing to give it a shot. They, you know, they might sense, you know, that your heart's blocked. And, you know, so maybe just having, getting to know them more, having a talk with them. And yeah, that's my advice for pile number three. So if that resonated, if you liked this reading, feel free to like, share, subscribe, comment. If there was another pile you felt drawn to, whether by number or crystal or stone, feel free to check it out because there might be some messages in there for you. Okay, so my pile number four people who shows the road a night. So I'm going to lay out all the cards first, and then we'll do the reading. So from the Chakra Tarot, we have Seven of Wands, Queen of Swords, and the Emperor. From the Goddess Guidance, we have White Terra, Sensitivity. You are becoming increasingly sensitive. Avoid harsh relationships, environments, situations, and chemicals. From the Romance Angels, um, first we got healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. We have let go of control issues. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. Love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Moonology to maybe see where your, your emotions are at. We have, you're very close to achieving your goal. From the angel answers, we have the situation will improve. Get more information. And then I asked for more information on that one. And we got be assertive. Oracle of the mermaids, we have transparency. Transparency. Honest, authentic, genuine, present. From the Black Moon Astrology, to maybe see um, what the person you're dealing with or will be dealing with in the future, what sign they are. We have Sagittarius and Pisces. Archetype, to see maybe um, what the person you're dealing with or will be dealing with, what their archetype is. So um, two came out, we have damsel and companion. For so damsel, for the light attribute, we have understanding the nature of healthy romance, inspires you to rely on yourself. The shadow is waiting for a night to provide for you, seduction by romantic illusion. And it's funny because at one point, I don't remember what point of shuffling I was, but I was actually like getting the song Someday My Prince Will Come from Snow White. And I was like humming it, I'm like, I'm like, okay, which group is this? And then it's funny that this card came out. Companion. So we have light attributes, loyalty, um, unselfishness. Um, shadow is betrayal by misusing confidences, loss of personal identity. Okay. And then from the lover's oracle, we have playfulness. Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together and remember love is the greatest healer. Okay, so for my pile number four people... Okay, so in your love life, my single goddesses, it's like you're going through this process of who's right for you, who's not. Um, because with the white tarot, the sensitivity, I feel like for some of you, you could be empaths um, or you could be very sensitive to people's energies. Um, you know, you could be someone that everyone thinks is very sweet, very nice. And, and you know, sometimes people take advantage of that, right? Um, I think for a lot of you, if you are that type of person, it's showing with the, you're very ch close to achieving your goal. I think this is something you've been trying to work on. Um, if you haven't been working on this yet, this is then telling you, okay, if that 
resonated with you, like the, your personality type, then it's saying, okay, this is what you need to start working on to move forward, to complete the pattern, to complete the cycle. Because with healing family issues, it's like, you know, we all have different wounds from, you know, our upbringing, you know, from our parents, from grandparents, whether we're conscious of it or not, because we take on our ancestral DNA and our ancestral, you know, um, familial karma, right? So even if um, we don't, we're not conscious of it, or it's not, you know, or we're saying, oh, you know, I love my parents, I get along with them, great, okay, still there could be something there that could be that's a wound that needs to be healed. So looking at, okay, where, you know, why do I keep attracting this type of person? Why am I constantly in this situation? And kind of getting, you know, being aware to know this root cause of why, what it is you need to heal from. And with the love yourself first, it might be like, that's one thing that's coming up. So maybe if you are that sensitive person, that really loving, caring person that always is like doing for others, you're always giving and other people are taking, it's saying, no, you need to put yourself first. You know, your first responsibility is to yourself. And also you have to have love and compassion for yourself because if you're not feeling complete within, if you don't love yourself, you're not gonna be able to be in a healthy relationship. With lack of control issues, same thing. This is another, you know, wound. It's like, because control ultimately is from a place of fear, right? and it's a lower vibration. So fear and love are opposite vibrations. So if you are you know, trying to control someone or a situation, um, you know, whether you mean to or not, it's, it's still an opposite vibration of love. So I hope that makes sense. But so even if you're not trying to control them, but if you're always wondering what's going on or you're wanting to control the situation, that's still not from a loving vibration. And with this honest, you know, authentic, genuine, it's not to say that you're not that person. It's just maybe like you, again, like some of you maybe have dealt with people who weren't this and you know, you, this transparency, it's like you took that on empathically. And if you take on other people's stuff and energy, you know, that's really gonna bring you down and lower your vibration. So you might just need to get clear of, um, you know, clear of that to get to your authentic self. And also I'm getting about your authentic self, meaning clearing and healing from wounds of the past, whether, you know, that's within yourself and your family line. Um, because ultimately if we live from a place of love or being our authentic self, but if, you know, we have this, you know, these lessons, these wounds, these, you know, we're not loving ourselves, we're not in our authentic, you know, we're not who we genuinely are you know, if we're letting our, you know, wounds and our karma or our issues leading the way. And this is, okay, so with the be assertive, again, that's what I'm saying. If, for those of you on this pile, if you're that sweet person, that one that everyone thinks is so loving and caring and you're, oh, oh, you're so nice, you know, stop being so nice all the time. Like, you know, you need to set boundaries, you know, like on like, you know, like don't like make others have make demands of your time. Like, you know, your first, again, first responsibility is to yourself. So own your power, you know, be assertive. Don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to say this doesn't work for me. And, and I'm just getting like, you saying yes. <laughs> so, um, what the situation will, will improve. It's saying like, you know, if you're, you know, things are getting better and that's where, again, you got the, you're achieving, uh, you're close to achieving your goal. So I think a lot of you have already been working on this, but keep going, keep reaching because it's going to be an ongoing process, you know, like not, and I'm not saying it's forever. I'm just saying like, if you are trying to master something, if you're trying to heal a wound, you're completing a pattern, you know, healing takes time. It's not overnight. Okay. And healing's not this beautiful, pro peaceful process. You know, it takes work. It's, you know, you go through the ringer sometimes, but ultimately you do get to a better place. So know that that light is there, but you have to keep reaching for it. You have to keep doing what you're doing. Again, if you're um, newer to this, what you've been working on, it it is showing you that hope that you're gonna get there, but you have to keep on going. So, yeah, so with this playfulness, it's like, I feel like you maybe need to let go more and not be, that's again, worth the let go of control issues. You know, maybe if you, there is someone that you've been involved with or you're interested in, 
maybe not put so much pressure on what is this going to be and just have more fun with it. And I'm not saying to do anything that doesn't align with you. I'm just saying that, you know, you know, whether it's like you want to get to know this person as your friend first, or, you know, you just want to casually date, you know, if that's just going on dates, I'm not saying, you know, do what's right for you. Okay. I'm not telling you to like throw caution, all caution to the wind. And, you know, I'm just saying that you do need to like get in more of that playful energy and less of this controlled of like, where is this going? Or what are we? Because for you right now, like the main thing is you need to heal yourself and love yourself first. So even if there is someone there right now, it's just saying not to like worry about limiting yourself you know, it's not really the right time for you maybe to be in a relationship because you have to do this first. And that's not to say you won't. It's just showing that this is like the main theme for your single goddess reading. And again, I know like if you're wanting love and you know, you're hearing this, you know, this could be like, you know, disheartening to hear, but, but know that like there is that other side of things. Like once you get past this, you're going to attract someone better for you because otherwise you might just attract that same person from before. And I keep, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't want to, and I keep getting shitty person and I, you know, I don't want to like call anyone or label anyone that, but again, it's like, and this might not be something you say about an ex or a past person. It could be like people in your life, you know, say this person is shitty or was shitty or whatever it was. But again, like if they're not good for you, they're taking advantage, you know, or, you know, it's their current person partner and they have no idea or you you have had no idea and it's again it's about this healing from these wounds so if you haven't you know involved with someone or dealing with someone or this could be a future person they could be a Sagittarius or Pisces so when people ask what your sign is that's just your sun sign so if this isn't their sun it could be their rising their moon their Venus their Mars and you know or with the you know like the fire and the because Sagittarius is fire, Pisces is water. This is more like a feeler. And also Sagittarius and Pisces are both idealistic. So again, this maybe is someone down the road or of like what could be is what I'm getting. And with these cards, the damsel, even though I asked for your person, I'm getting that maybe you were more of the damsel, you know, like Oh, and I, I'm getting it's vice versa. So like there's part of you that wants someone to maybe come in and save the day and like, you know, you're, you have this idealistic, oh, I, you know, this is what I want. But then I'm also, I'm getting that you've attracted damsels, you know, whether, you know, um, you date men, women, both, whatever the situation, you might attract like that lost puppy or that, you know, like the, you know, wounded animal who, and, you know, you know, like that person, that type of person who needs help and that, you're, you know, you swoop in to kind of save the day. But, you know, on the other hand, you could also be the person that's the damsel or you could maybe play both roles, roles at times. So take what resonates for you personally. But, you know, you don't want to keep attracting this again, like the light attribute is the nature of a healthy relationship. And that's maybe something you haven't had before. So you have to, you know, have a healthy, balanced relationship that isn't about control, that isn't about, you know, feeding our wounds. It's about, oh, you know, we both have love for ourselves within, we have love for each other, it's mutual respect, trust, all that good stuff. <laughs> and with the companion, it's like, again, I'm getting that you could attract the right person for you in the future, but you need to get out of this like past pattern, this past energies. So again, there is hope for, someone different once you complete the cycle, but you're still working on this. And one thing I'm getting to is with this queen of swords and emperor energy, you could have had with this healing family issues, you could have had a parent that was cold that, you know, um, so whether it was your mom, your dad, or even both, again, take what resonates, but you could have had like a, like a parent that you felt like you never pleased that was very cold and you know you were always the one like maybe trying to cater to them or like give them love and you didn't feel like you got it from them so that's maybe why you keep going out trying to give all your love and then it's to these people who just take 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 from that because they take advantage you know because your wound is that you just want to be loved and you want to love so again take what resonates if that isn't about your you know um 
one or both of your parents. I'm getting that this could be like a partner from the past or what you normally attract is that like, you know, you could attract, you know, like someone cold or detached and it's like, and again, like, I'm getting that you could feel maybe like invisible is what I'm getting or you feel like your love's not enough. But again, it's going back to a deeper issue and with the seven of wands, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I'm getting, it's really about, there's a lot that you're like inner healing you're having to do first. So know that, you know, you're watching this, you know, you're a goddess, you have the, poly, the, um, why am I going to, I just was going to say apology when I was, was going to say ability. So I don't know if there's someone that you feel like owes you an apology, but but anyways, what I was saying is that you have the ability to recover and heal from this, to get, you know, you know, take, you know, these things and transmute the situations, you know, turn them around so you can attract the right person and partner for yourself um, than you have before. And again, like, you know, be a little more lighthearted about things. Um, You know, don't give away everything at first or, you know, you're all, I mean, like take things one day at a time. Again, this could be a lot of control issues. So take what resonates. I mean, for some of you, all this might make sense or for some of you, there just might be, you know, pieces and, you know, go with um, your gut, your intuition, what you feel, but really, you know, there are, there is work that you, that needs to be done. Again, if you've already been working on this, great, you know, like, you know, I commend you for that. Keep doing it. You're doing great. You know, if it's still new to you and you just became aware, I mean, that's the first step. Once you know the root cause, once you're aware of why you're being triggered or why this is happening, then you could, you know, work on it. So, and again, if this is a wake up call for you because you've never heard anything like this, you know, just let it seep in. You know, again, this is just to help you. I know it's not always what you want to hear when you're watching a love reading that you have work to do. But I mean, you know, isn't it better that you work on this to attract the right partner for you than to keep attracting, you know, toxic relationships or partners that don't serve you or that you're, you know, not genuinely happy with. So I hope this made sense for pile number four. If this resonated, if you liked it, feel free to like, share, subscribe, comment. If you felt drawn to another pile, whether by number, crystal, or stone, feel free to check it out because there might be messages for you in that pile as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on to my pile four single goddesses who chose the lapis. So whether you chose by number five or the lapis or both, this is for you. <coughs> so for the tarot cards, we have the queen of wands the Queen of Coins, Seven of Cups, and the World. From the Goddess Guidance, we have Mary Magdalene, unconditional love. Love yourself, others, and every situation, no matter what the outward appearances may be. From the Romance Angels, we have Romantic Feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. It is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. And release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. From the moonology, to see maybe where your emotions are at. Regarding love romance, we have you're good enough, full moon and Virgo. From the angel answers, we have let go and reconsider. So I was like, okay, one more for clarification, please, because those kind of, um, <laughs> I kind of felt were conflicting, and then we have in the near future. So we'll get to all of this in a minute. I just want to lay them all out. For the Oracle of, of the Mermaids, we have Atlantis, Rapid Development, Excellent Success. From the Black Moon Astrology cards, to see maybe what sign the person you've been dealing with or will be dealing with is, we have Cancer and Aries. And from the archetype cards to see um, what the person you've been dealing with or will be dealing with, what they're like. Three cards wanted to come out. I just wanted one 
two tops, but I felt they all went together. So we have Seeker, Thirst for Wisdom and Truth wherever they are. The Shadow is an ability to commit to a path once found. We have Child Magical, so the light is seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things, the belief that everything is possible. The Shadow is pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. And we have Exorcist. The light is freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses. The shadow is fear facing your own demons. Okay. And then from the Lover's Oracle, we have Balance. Love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. A great relationship is one that both supports and challenges. Okay. So, jumping in. So, what I got with this Atlantis card is that... Like, you're moving your way up, like, at a spiritual, energetic level. Like, you're trying to, you know, let things go, which is the let go card over here. Like, you're trying to ascend. You're trying to move your way up. And you are doing it. And with the balance, it's like, I'm getting that it was more about balancing your own allergy. Um, sorry. I, I don't know. Why I almost I wanted to say allergy. I don't know why. Um, energy. So, you know, you're trying to balance your energies, you know, feminine, masculine within because, you know, we all have a feminine, masculine side, um, you know, just balancing, you know, uh, mind, body, spirit. But again, it's like, I feel like, you know, my single goddess is in pile five. It looks like you have been doing your work and, you know, you are ascending to a new level, but you do need to believe that you are good enough, that you are worthy. And... And this is where this unconditional love is coming in. Like, most of all, you need to have love for yourself. Like, don't, um, I'm getting about, like, don't give away your power to others, making sure that you stand in your power, because you could still stand in your power and be loving and kind and have fierce compassion. It's, again, this is about balance, you know? It's like, I know it could be hard because you know, if you're, you know, more tough and you're more setting your boundaries and saying no when you want to, I know that sometimes doesn't feel like you're being loving, but you're actually being loving because, you know, you're respecting yourself, your boundaries. And, you know, that doesn't mean you have to, you know, and you could always speak to that person, you know, speaking your truth. It could come from a place of love and light and like compassion. It doesn't have to be like, you know, in a bitchy way. Right. You know, but it's like, sometimes we could have that idea like, oh, you know, to be loving, we need to, you know, not tell people this or that, but you're not doing yourself any favors. And also you're not doing that person any favors, you know, you could be enabling them or, you know, you're, you know, by not being communicative, you're not having a healthy, conscious, open, honest relationship. So I'm hoping this is making sense. So this is kind of like these cards are more about you and like what you've been dealing with or going through. But I do see like a lot of you have been working on this. So just keep it up. Um, with so there is a past energy showing because we have released your ex and then we got let go so this doesn't mean that you're necessarily there's not really showing anything about you're in grief over this person um for some of you you know maybe you do have some lingering feelings for them or it could just be maybe you're connected energetically you know maybe there's something about them you're not letting go or maybe it's someone like from your past, like an ex who like did you wrong and now you're like, okay, it's maybe like preventing you from moving on and moving forward. So for whatever reason, like you do have to clear your energies from this ex because for whatever reason they're showing up. So again, whether that's energetically, you need to do some cord pulling, some energy clearing healing, or it's, you know, you know, if you have lingering feelings, um, but don't let that prevent you from moving forward because if they were someone like, for example, like, I think this could have been about like a past person or for some of you, maybe it's someone that's still there. So maybe some of you still talk to this ex or, you know, like whether they were actually a relationship or someone you were dating, but with the seeker exorcist and child magical, it sounds like this person might have two sides to them. You know, it's like, Oh, you know, like, they're like the seeker and, you know, this child magical. It's like, oh, you know, 
they're trying to like live their best life and you know they could be exciting and you know want the best that life has to offer but they might be hiding they're not wanting to deal with their own demons their issues and there might might be like bypassing them and and it's not healthy because they're not you're trying to do your work and they're not and so you might need to exercise them in the sense of you know freeing yourself if you know like this person if you and this person are on the same page and you're not aligned, you're not on the same level, it's like, okay, I'm doing my work and if they're not, this is where that letting go needs to come through. Because yeah, you might have feelings for them. They might be someone that has this allure or magic about them. But if at the end of the day, if they're not doing their work and you are, and you're trying to like move on and move forward, like again, with this Atlantis card, you're trying to move, you know, this success, it's not just like, success materially this is like you know in big ways is what I'm getting and you can't you know let someone else hold you back and it's not to say like you know even if you have feelings for them okay but if these feelings like if you have a connection with someone you have a connection with them but if that connection isn't you know if you're not aligned with each other you can't allow it to hold you back so I hope that makes sense but the thing is, is like with this world up here, you have the world card, okay? This is about you, like, and with the queen of, you got queen of wands and queen of coins. So it's like, you know, you're practical, you know, you're successful, but you're also passionate, you know, you're, you know, in your power. And so it's like, it's showing that you're re really have come a long way and you can continue coming a long way. And with the seven of cups, you might be kind of, lost in a fantasy or entrenched in maybe some of these past energies and you don't want that to hold you back because it's like with this world card again like beautiful things are going to come down the road for you in your life and in all ways in all ways shapes and form and I feel it's like you just have to like again like push forward and like move up and like let yourself ascend and if this person if you know whether they're in your life or not you have to like ascend beyond that and if they're not going to rise with you rise to your level then it's like you kind of have to let it go and leave it be and that's not to say like you can't honor oh if you have a connection with them you have feelings for them again for some of you it might have just been like maybe you're wanting that again maybe it's not even about them but there is this energy of releasing with it safe for you to love you know you could be blocked like your heart could be blocked because of this person and maybe that's what it is it's not about them it's just oh this is what happened and that makes sense if we get hurt by someone you know there's someone that you know we really felt for but we don't connect to that and you know wanting to find that again but not sure we're ready for it but in the near future there is this possibility that someone might be coming your way Again, I'm getting, it was very conflicting energies because we have let go and then reconsider. So there is something you need to let go of. But so for some of you, it might be different. Some of you, like this person was from the past. You just need to let them go and, and stop reconsidering like, oh, what if? And you just kind of need to let it go for new energy, need like a new person to come in in the future. And you need to like open up for some of you. It could be like you've tried letting this person go, but maybe there is a connection there still. And maybe in the near future, maybe something might shift. And that's maybe when you could reconsider things. But again, however, for right now, if you and them aren't on the same wavelength, if you are trying to ascend, you're trying to move up, you're trying to do things, and they're not where you're at, you know, you just kind of have to stop daydreaming, fantasizing, ugh, fantasizing sorry, <laughs> and worrying about like, what they're going to do because again you have a lot coming up for you in your life that's going to take off that you need you need to focus on yourself so i hope that makes sense with the signs with cancer and aries this when people ask what your sign is that's just your sun sign so it could be their sun sign or it could be like their rising their moon their venus their mars so with aries and cancer um again it's this could be someone this could be this ex, this person from the past. Um, it possibly could be like 
someone else in the near future. It's hard because it's not really showing like a new person's energy. Not that it can't, but I think it's because so heavily this reading was about you and like things about like you ascending and your success in life and always and moving up forward and then just still being tied to this past person. So it's really hard to see a new person coming in. But there is something coming in the near future, so it's kind of right now open of what's going to happen because it could be also dependent on what you decide to do. Because is this person worth holding on to or are they not? And again, like I'm getting different scenarios so for some people, this just needs to be cleared. For some people, this could be, and again, like I should say goddesses because that's, you know, who's watching, right? <laughs> Um, for some of you goddesses, this could be someone that could come back. And again, that's why I'm getting a conflicting energy. It's really like what's going to happen there. So if you know your ex is someone that, you know, you're done with, you can't have in your life, you need to clear it, clear it. If it's someone that, you know, it, like you're not sure of to let go. Hi, sorry. Um, I was continuing to talk and then someone was calling in. So the video got cut off, but I'm going to continue on. So as I was saying there, it's going to be different for some of you because there's a couple different situations, but just trust your intuition. If you're unsure about if you need to let go of this person, if there is still like a bond there connection, I would for now, again, just focus on yourself and working on what we talked about at the beginning of the reading and just see what happens because I think in the near future something will happen and then you could always make your decision from there whether you need to let this person go for good or you should reconsider giving them a chance. Um, but I think it's like, again, like you might be on different levels with them where, you know, you're doing their work and maybe they're not. Um, it's just, you, yeah, there might be like an imbalance. And that's why it's saying like, you need to be balanced within. So for now, like I said, I see great things for you and your life all around and just kind of keep moving forward and know that you can open your heart and be open to love. And then just trust your intuition, whether you need to let go of this person or you're willing to see what plays out in the future. Again, whether a new person will come in, um, right now it's not really showing because it's more, I'm picking more up your energy and then the X energy. So, and feel free to choose another, if you felt drawn to another number or another crystal or stone, I would check it out because there might be other messages in there for you as well. And if this resonated, if you liked this video, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe. Okay, so we're gonna move on to pile number six. So if you chose pile number six or the serpentine, this reading is for you. So for the tarot cards, we have Queen of Cups, Four of Swords, Two of Coins. From the Goddess Guidance, we have Lakshmi bright future. Stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. Romance angels. We have, well, okay, here, let me, I'm going to go, the first ones that came out were forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Finances and career, financial issues are a factor in your love, right? Love life right now. And then soulmate, uh, soulmate and honeymoon came out. Honeymoon kind of came out without like I didn't see it at first, so it was kind of interesting. But we have, yes, this is your soulmate. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. And I'm going to explain everything after I lay all the cards out. For the moonology, to kind of see where your emotions are at. So um, the message actually is your hard work is paying off, new moon and Capricorn. Angel answers, we have not the right time and within the next few months. Oracle of the Mermaids, we have beauty, grace, loveliness, integration of form and spirit. From the Black Moon Astrology to see maybe what sign you're dealing with or will be dealing with, we have Gemini and Virgo. For 
for an archetype to see maybe what your person is like. We have Hermit. Seeks solitude to focus intently on inner life. Serves personal creativity for the light side. The shadow is withdrawals from society out of fear or negative judgments of others, refusing to help those in need. Okay, and then from the Lover's Oracle, I wanted just one message, but two came out. And we have sexual union, honor the place in one another where you are eternal soul, for you will find true bliss. And then we have embrace, through each other you find the missing pieces. So it's funny how sexual union and embrace came out together. Okay, so jumping in. So one theme, obviously, is that right now you're trying to work on your life and trying to build you know, so your career, you know, your foundation, your finances, and this is where the finances and careers coming. But again, you got your hard work is paying off and you have a bright future. So that's why maybe things aren't the, not the right time with this within the next few months. So maybe, you know, right now your love life's not taking off, but it, something will come up in the next few months tied to this soulmate, whether you know them or not. Because right now it's just like you're trying to there's a lot of wheels in motion. And again, it's about your, your work, your finances, your career, your future you're trying to create. And also I think it's like, maybe you need like a rest. So like maybe you have been working a lot and you need to take a time out. And it like, um, <laughs> oh, it's funny. Like when I just said time out, I was getting like a time out, like, you know, like a child being in time out. And maybe you're someone that works so hard that you don't give yourself breaks. So it's like someone literally needs to tell you, okay, you need to take a time out. Like, you know, because it's like you've been overworking. Um, okay, with this time is getting like successes at your door, like this two of coins. It's like, like I do feel it's like this is what's happening right now. And then in the future, you're going to get the relationship coming in and then you're going to have that balance. So maybe it's like you have been overworking because this is what you've been striving for. And like that makes sense to you. And whether it does or it doesn't yet, and and then you're going to have a relationship coming in. You're going to have more of a balance in your life. So maybe, you know, that's where maybe you're put, putting all your energy for whatever reason because someone, you don't have a partner there or there's something specific that you're working on that you're, is taking a lot of your energy. But that's kind of what's called for right now. With forgiving and learning, you also, with and the four of swords, that time out could be, that time out could have been from dating because it's like you had to like do some healing and that's maybe what's still going on presently. So that's why it isn't the right time. And that's why I'm saying the, within the next few months. And again, this is, could be up to the next few months. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be, you know, it's because it says within, right? So, you know, we have our, you know, timing could be um, based on our free will. Like, you know, when we choose to heal, you know, from things and healing is an overnight process. And also, you know, with this hard work paying off, but you still need to rest. So, if you've been really gung-ho about things, that's great, but you need some time for you. And you need to stop and see the beauty in life. And let's see. Okay, so if there is someone like a soulmate that you already know of, but maybe nothing's happened yet or nothing's taken off, again, this could be someone new coming in. It really just depends on your situation. And, but what you, what characteristics to kind of look for to see whether it's someone you already know or you don't know this person yet. With the Virgo and Gemini, so when people ask your sign, that's your sun sign. However, this could be another influence in their chart, like their rising, their moon, their Venus, their Mars. However, Virgo and Gemini are both ruled by the planet Mercury. You know, it's like the planet of intellect, communication, thinking, travel. So your person could be very, you know, like think, look, Gemini, I think, Virgo, I analyze. So this person is very much a thinker. So, you know, when it comes to romance, when you're dating someone who's very in their head, that, you know, that could be hard to take things off, right? So maybe that's something too, maybe on their end, you know, maybe they have their own wounds they're healing from and dealing with. And with this hermit, I mean, so your person could be hiding away too, like they're maybe doing their own healing or they're retreating and that's maybe like so maybe you're mirroring each other even where you're both having to like work on your own things you're taking some time out from dating you know you're trying to heal yourself and this person could have a hermit energy they could you know be more get lost within themselves but it you know it doesn't mean like a bad thing um but i think maybe both of you 
could be in that same space even and that and it's just like for both of you it's not the right time romantically but again in the next few months it can be and this is maybe where that honeymoon time together is so maybe that's when you'll both be able to feel more free to have this together and you'll you know have this honeymoon you know like that beginning of the phase dating relationship and you know maybe you know you could even end up you know taking a trip with them or something Oh, because it's funny, too, with, like, the two of coins, like, with the water here, too. Like, look at this. And, I'm, like, I was getting something, too, like, your, if your, like, ship is ready to come in. So, it's, like, all about timing. And then with this person, too, the soulmate, the sexual union embrace. So, this, and, like, the honeymoon, too, it's, like, you know, you're going to have, like, a great connection with them but I don't think it's just sexual like you know I do think it's like someone who will honor you and support you and also is like you know not just a feeler but a thinker and who is dedicated to you know their own growth and healing and what they're working on in their life so that's really beautiful so yeah so I would just say keep working on your healing keep working on your work and what you're trying to create and you know, whether this is someone you know already or not, um, you know, just let it all work in divine timing and just keep on doing what you're doing and things will unfold perfectly in the right time. So yeah, I think that, <laughs> that was a very like clear, concise, uh, well, compared to pile five, pile five was kind of had, you know, some mixed messages going on. Cause I think, you know, there was not to get into it all, but, um, yeah, this was very like straightforward. So so yeah, I hope you liked this and this resonated. And if it did, feel free to like, share, subscribe, comment. If you felt drawn to another pile um, or crystal, feel free to check it out because, you know, this is a collective reading. So there might be other messages within one of the other piles if you felt called to it. Okay. So thank you all for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, feel free to like, share, subscribe, comment. And I wish you all the best, my goddesses. Love and light.